Are you though? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a delay on my end, I guess. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Wayne G. I'm turning the reins over to Kelly for the entire show. Um, obviously, we got a bunch to get into. It's a holiday show. It's kind of a laid back episode. We're just going to kind of chill, and hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff to get to. First things first, we'll get to the video. And then after that, Sully is going to be uh, captain. You know, I like to jump the gun, so let's do the video quickly, and then and then that way I can get into my shit. You know. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this Belly Up Sports Podcast Network product. Some said we go belly up, so we made it our name, and we're still here. Jordan. Drives one out to deep left field. This one's got a chance to get out of here. Go! Three runs. Jimmy Jack first big league home run for Mike Trout. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. And an 81 point game. 55 in the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the second greatest scoring performance in NBA history. Hey, how we doing, folks? It's Infinity Sports. You got your man here, Sully. Over here with Wayne G. This way, this way. We're here with Wayne G. We're brought to you by uh, uh, Belly Up Sports. You know, we're, we're proud to be there. You know, Invader Coffee. You want to throw that graphic up? I don't have the Invader Coffee graphic, but... Oh, of course you don't. The day I'm, like, ready to actually do it. We're brought to you by Invader Coffee. They're 100% air-roasted, 100% organic, uh, 100% money-back guarantee. It's actually great coffee, no lie. I've got it. It's really good. You should try it. Uh, it's banging. Wayne, how we living today, bro? Not too shabby. As you can see, it's the holiday show. I just like to just kind of chill today. We don't have that schedule, kind of keep making a sweat at the bottom. We can just kind of chill and just talk about a few things. Yeah, man, I'm actually pretty excited. Now, I know we've kind of got like a plan and everything, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Tua Tugavailoa beating the New England Patriots. Yeah, well, I've been the Dolphins beat the Patriots, but yeah. And I know that's not on our list of things to talk about, which I understand. Why would you want to talk about your team losing? But you've got to talk about it when Bill Belichick hasn't lost to a rookie quarterback in, I think it was 03 was the last one he lost to. I think it was Geno Smith. I thought it was never. I thought he's never lost to him. No, he has. He lost okay. to Geno Smith as a Jet in overtime. Um, but I, I believe it was 03 or something like that. Um, and so, I mean, God, that's, you know, 17 years ago. So, I, I mean, truthfully, I, I honestly kind of want your your God's honest take of your Patriots right now. Do you think you have a shot at making the playoffs? Do you think you are, are worthy? Like, kind of, I know worthy is a bad word, but I mean, like, should you guys even make the playoffs at this point kind of thing? Well, I thought that game effectively eliminated them from the playoff. <clears throat> Even if they win the last two, it doesn't really matter. Oh, they're, they're out regardless? Okay. They're done, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's fine. I, I'm hoping that now that they're done with two games left, can we please put Jarrett Stidham in now and see what he's doing? Uh, he has to be on the worst like side of Bill Belichick's bad side. I think I've ever seen kind of thing. Like This is remiss of like who was the guy that they held out of the Super Bowl? For oh, Malcolm, or, Malcolm Butler, like Malcolm Butler, like it's got to be something like that. There's got to be like a personal vendetta against this guy to just not allow him to play. There's no way like you can't give this kid a shot and at least see what he has. I don't understand it whatsoever. Well, my understanding is that they were really high on him in the preseason. It was like, this is our guy, you know, and even when they brought Cam Newton in, it was like, you're going to compete. Yeah. You're not going to be the starter. You know, um, and then I heard he was like late to meetings and stuff and stuff like that. Well, I think he, he went to like a wedding or something like that during COVID. And so uh -huh. that rubbed Bill Belichick the wrong way instead of going and working on his craft. I don't know. Whatever he did, he really pissed off Bill. Um, I don't think Bill's written him off. I think this is kind of like teaching him a lesson. But at this point, if you're the organization, these last two games that don't mean anything, doesn't matter whether you win or lose, at least see if he can throw the ball. I know he can throw it better than Cam. That's the thing. I mean, he's got to give you more as a passer, at least, than Cam. Like, yeah, I understand Cam is, I mean, at this point, a decent game manager. But, I mean, like, your defense is very good. I don't think it's elite right now, but it's very good, and it just needs help from an offense, and it's not getting it. Um, now, real quick, again, to stay on the Patriots, I know this isn't kind of what we planned, but what do you think is the take with – 
you know, now this ties into maybe the Jets with now the Jets losing or winning and now the Jags taking over the number one spot. So now Gardner Minshew was already out the door, but he's 100% out the door. Sam Darnold now kind of has a shot to stay, but maybe he's out the door. Where do you think these quarterbacks land up? Do you think New England ends up with one? And if you do, which one's the best one for New England? Well, that's a good question. And I had a list. That was something that I was going to put on here, but we had okay. so much other stuff to get to that I was like, eh. But no, I think that there's going to be quite a few quarterbacks. It's not just going to be those two. Uh, Dak Prescott, I think, would be a phenomenal fit for the New England Patriots if the Cowboys decide, to just, listen, we're not going to pay you. You're coming off the injury, and we're going to franchise you again and trade you. Mm-hmm. The New England Patriots make a ton of sense because Dak Prescott would be the best quarterback on the market at that point. Easily. Yeah. If it's not him um, – I mean, again, guys you could look at. You have uh, Minshew, I think. I honestly like – I know Brandon's going to think this is sacrilegious, but I actually like Mitchell Trubisky uh, as far as what he does and what the Patriots do, the short passes is your running game. Mm-hmm. I think that really plays into his strength. Marcus Mariota's in that same boat. Uh, I got to get really a lot of his team. He still <coughs> play last week. He did all right. So, I mean, he's and I, be available. Depending on Derek Carr's injury, it looks like he may be playing a little more. I mean, groins are, are iffy, so you could see a lot of them at this point. Jameis Winston may not want to stay in New Orleans if they're not going to give him a shot here now, you know. So what about the big one, Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz would be phenomenal. The problem with Carson Wentz, I think, is that he's owed one hundred and forty million dollars over the next four years. So it's like, yes, Bill Belichick can probably get him on the cheap just because of that, but it's not really on the cheap because you got to pay him one hundred forty million dollars. Yeah, but it's—I don't think it's one hundred forty against the cap. So his signing bonus is what's due, which is like a big hit um, this coming year. Um, and I'm pretty sure Philly's on the hook for that no matter what. Um, he's, got, he's got 30 – his number against the cap this coming season is 34. Yeah, and I, I – I, see, I thought it was 52 and it was 34 dead. It's 52 dead. Oh, it's 52 dead? So okay, so then he's got 18 dead against the cap. So that's stuck for um, – like the 18, like that difference, like wouldn't be held for um, – uh, New England. So they really only got to absorb 34 mil. And then at that point, hopefully maybe you can, and then the next season kind of figure out that issue. I mean, if he returns to 2017 form, 34 mil is a bargain at that point. So, I, I mean, I know that's a big if obviously, but you would think with Josh McDaniels and a competent offense around him, he'd be able to, I mean, be a, the MVP candidate we thought he was. But then that's where it comes down to if everybody's available, would you rather have Wentz for 34 or would you rather have Dak for 38? Dak for 38 and no future contract. Yeah. Well, so, I think uh, if he goes, the, they would have to give him a long term deal. It wouldn't just be. Yeah, I understand. And, and I mean, the other thing though is like, what are the asking prices going to be for these guys? I mean, Dak's going to demand at least two firsts. You know, so is, so is uh, Carson Wentz, you would think. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. That's a lot to give up, man. That's a lot. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. They're definitely going to end up with a new quarterback. I'm still holding out and hoping that it's Jarrett Stidham. Uh, again, I hope he gets a couple starts here, throws for 300 yards a game, and they say, all right, you know what, we'll give you a shot going into the next year. But I'm sure they will get a backup plan at the very least. Yeah. I mean, to keep with the quarterback trend here, I'm honestly going to skip over Mando. We'll talk about it at the end of the show. Um, The Jets. I mean – is there a worse franchise on the planet than the fucking Jets? How do you screw this up? How? How do you go out there and win a ball game at this point? Like, like how fucking stupid? I apologize for cursing. I need to stop. But, like, how stupid can you be? By the way, Big Sammy, Little Sammy, big shout-outs. Both of you. Love you. Bam. Appreciate it. Um, But... <sighs> Little Sammy, by the way, your dad's a stud, man. He's a he's a killer. He's a real pro. Uh, I don't understand how 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 a, a organization be, can be so incompetent right now. I mean, I love Justin Fields. He's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not even close to Trevor Lawrence at this point. We, we've seen that this year. Trevor Lawrence is just a different breed of player. And I mean, Jacksonville hit the lottery at this point. Well, they did, but I also think that it's not all bad for the Jets. And the first thing, with all these people calling the Jets stupid for for winning this game, the players are going to try to win the game. I mean, you're never going to convince a player, hey, we want to take your spot with a quarterback in the draft. Can you lose on purpose for us? You know? And so I think that the Jets did as good a job as they can of putting a team out there that would lose, and they just didn't. Yeah. I mean, they, they, uh, at this point, the coach has to scheme a loss, to be fair. Uh, Brandon Combs, what's up, boys, from Triple Shot Sports? How's it going, Brandon? Hey. Enjoying the uh, the colors here, the holiday colors. 
uh, I mean, again, like I get the players want to win and are going to win and, and are going to try their hardest to win. But I mean, as a franchise, you got to do everything you can to not let them win like you do. Yeah, well, that's what I, was, yeah, I understand what you're saying. As a coach, maybe it's like you say, yeah, calling more running plays, but the quarterback can always audible at the line. And is are you going to pull the quarterback and say, "Oh, he was hurt," or I, I don't know? It's it's a big messy situation. So the best thing you can do, especially as a coach too, you can't give any indication like, "Hey guys, I'm going to yeah. start calling the game to lose," but they're going to know if if it's a close game and you're running the ball instead of passing. Like they're going to know. And- yeah, but I mean, Greg Williams ran a zero blitz on a fucking God. I got to stop on a on a hail mary play. Like how how more obvious can you get? Like start running zero blitzes in in, op- in unopportune times. Uh, and this is uh, Brandon taking the show to give us his hot takes. Uh, I've said it before. I've said it again. Lawrence is going to be a bust. He's not going to be a bust. He's not. He's just not. I mean, there's just. I'm telling you, there's just no way. There's just really no way. Um, he's he's just. I'm telling you, Brandon. I've done this a, a, a decently long time now, over a decade now. We're going on 15 years. I'm telling you, man, the guy doesn't do anything bad. He just doesn't. He's he's everything you want as a quarterback. I'm, it's it's really not fair to watch this guy play football. I mean, the pass he makes to Rodgers in that in that game against Notre Dame is everything you ever want to see from a college quarterback. He 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 takes he, for one he makes the pre-snap read that it's right. He looks off the guy that he needs to look off, steps up in the pocket and delivers the most beautiful dime strike I've seen in a long time. I, I truthfully don't understand how anybody doesn't see a flawless prospect. Well, his take is his numbers go way down when he throws more than 30 times. But they don't. I mean, the guy just still wins ball games. Like, what numbers? Like, what numbers here? I mean, if he throws more than 30 times, his his yardage numbers are obviously going to be higher. Um, his completion numbers, I agree. That's his, that's his only knock is – he can be at times inaccurate, um, especially in the in the championship game that he lost. He, he it was too big for him at the moment, and he was pretty inaccurate. I mean, he did come back and win the national championship the next season, and I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't see anything I dislike about this kid. Well, and that kind of leads to because we were talking about uh, the, the Jets and the loss and how it drops them to number two right now in the draft. I actually said this is a good thing for them. Because if they were number one, they really don't have any choice but to take Lawrence. That's really kind of their only play. But falling to Justin Fields, I think that they aren't under the same pressure to make that pick. I feel like this is now an opportunity for them to trade back to either somebody who wants Fields or a team that knows Cincinnati's going to take Penny Sewell at number three and wants to jump ahead of them to get Sewell. No, there's no way Fields doesn't end up at two. Because then, I mean, I just the price is far higher for a quarterback than it is a tackle. So here's 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 what I'm thinking at this point. Dak gets moved this offseason no matter what, essentially. No matter what. Even if it's not to New England, it's to somebody. So Dallas stays at, what, five or six, something like that. Then they get another first and possibly another. I think they move those to come up to number two and get Justin Fields. I truly do. And if I'm the Jets, honestly, I, I think I may take that deal as well. Now, I, me and you are, are much higher on Sam Darnold, not even much higher, but we're very high on Sam Darnold. We really do think he can be a, a true – I think he can win Super Bowls in the NFL, or Super Bowl at least in the NFL. Um, he has all the ability to. So, I mean, you get in this draft, if you can drop to five, get a Jamar Chase for him, get a – you know, Penny Sewell is going to be gone at that point, but, you know, get somebody. I mean, Patrick Sertain's playing lights out football right now. I, I mean, at this point, they need help everywhere. So, obviously, the more picks, the better, like you have said. Yeah. And I think the one that's really interesting to me is Miami, who's most likely going to get the wild card in the AFC East. And they're also going to get the Texans pick, which will probably be four, five, six in that range. Oh, they're moving down. Okay. But the only thing that they may not move down to is. They have the ability to pair um, Tua with either Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith in this draft. I think they're going to jump all over that. They need an offensive weapon bad, 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 bad. And I think they'll be able to do that uh, in this draft. And also Jamar Chase fits that offense incredibly well. And and I've spoken extremely highly of Jamar Chase, obviously. But, I mean, I would expect them to move down and accumulate picks. That's just kind of their their mode as a franchise right now, and it's, it's working. So why would you break it, you know? Yeah. Uh, next, you know, speaking of Trevor Lawrence, let's, let's ride on into it with, uh, uh, Clemson and Notre Dame here and, you know, just kind of your take, uh, I mean, does anybody really think this wasn't going to happen? I mean, Trevor Lawrence, 
he's a 24 point difference. Clearly. I mean, everybody's talking like DJ Ojalele kept him in the game and blah, 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 and blah. And no, the difference was when big time throws needed to be made, Trevor Lawrence made them. And that's, that's what made the difference of this game. Uh, I mean, I, I think also that, that Clemson's defense played much, much better, but I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a true difference maker in my opinion. For me, the biggest difference was the fact that in game one, Notre Dame held Clemson to about 75 yards rushing, and they had over 200 yards rushing in this game. And in game one, Clemson gave up 175 yards rushing, and in this game, they only gave up like 50 or 60 or 70, whatever it was. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I agree. That, I mean, I think that has a lot to do with it. But, I mean, I'm looking at it now. I'm trying to at least. Give me a sec. I, I, I know for a fact Trevor Lawrence rushed for a ton of those yards. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence had 90 of those yards. Yeah. So again, like Trevor Lawrence is the difference maker. By the way, for the guy who says when he throws over 30 times, his stats go down, he was 25 at 36 for 320 and two touchdowns and a pick. And the pick was off a tip ball. He also carried the ball 14 times for 90 yards and a touchdown. Like the guy's more mobile than Justin Fields is by far. Like it's not even a, a like a close option at this point. I, I, Trevor Lawrence is a, I mean, he's a god, dude. And I, and I agree, like, the, the rushing yards is, is a big thing, but 90 yards is a big deal, and that's from your quarterback. You know well, what I mean? And, and like I was saying, the biggest example is Etienne, who in game one had 18 carries for 50 yards. In this game, he had 10 for 125. So yeah. I mean, they're giving up 12 and a half yards a carry to him. Yeah, that was huge. But it's it, it's the read options where you actually have to respect Trevor Lawrence and his running ability that allow Etienne to get those lanes, in my opinion. When it's DJ Ojalele, he's not the kind of he's not the same mobile quarterback that that Trevor Lawrence is. He's just not. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is going to wow a lot of people with the times he runs. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, f- right back into it, Bama, Florida. I mean, I know Florida got beat, but man, we played a f- hell of a game. And I'm honestly, I'm super proud of my Gators. I mean, hats off to Alabama. Najee Harris just absolutely balled out. The guy was a monster. Um, both quarterbacks threw for 400 yards, which Mac Jones now holds the record for most yards in an SEC championship game, and Kyle Trask is second. Unfortunately, this was turnovers. You know what I mean? We had, I think it was three, and you're not going to win the game having three turnovers against Alabama. I mean, we lost by six, and we had three turnovers. So you take two of those turnovers away. And the shitty part was is, I mean, you saw it, I'm sure. I, I wish you had the play. Uh where we picked the ball off, and then did you see the hit? I didn't see it now. You haven't seen that play? (gasps) Oh, my God. So he picks the ball off, and he's returning it, and he's looking this way, and a receiver comes. And, I mean, you you remember old crackbacks, right? Yeah. It's an old crackback. He literally puts his head or puts his feet where his head was instantly, completely flips the guy. Ball goes flying. It was an absolute, I mean, a slobber knocker hit, like true, like football hit, man. It like, I was in the poker room at the time working. The entire room erupts. Oh, oh, I cannot believe you haven't seen it. Oh, man. I will say that Brandon has a question for us when we get to the college football playoffs. So hold tight on that question. Yeah. Brandon. Uh, no, as far as this game goes, my disappointment, because I watched like the last – uh, fourth quarter, I watched a little bit of the third quarter. I kind of kept flipping back and forth. And, and the thing that really bothered me is I've been really pumping Kyle Trask for the past few weeks. Like, hey, he didn't have a guy's moving up. I watched him, and, and what bothered me wasn't the, the turnovers as much. It was watching him not read anything past the first read. Mm-hmm. It was he would look left for seven seconds in a row and then throw left. Like he just he was never scanning the field. He was always looking in one direction and he was throwing in that direction. Yeah, the other thing I didn't like was his like pocket presence in this game. He now I understand there was a ton of pressure, and that's kind of what killed us this entire game. Uh, Alabama schemed incredible pressure. Florida couldn't block a lick, um, and and I honestly I think he was just thinking of the pressure a lot. And and you're gonna make bad decisions when you're thinking you're about to get hit and things like that. This was not a good game for Kyle Trask. It was not. Um, it's unfortunate because. It's against a defense that he's gonna kind of see in the NFL. You know what I mean? Like that that caliber player. We know how high Alabama ranks in in their prospects, and so like honestly, I take I put more stock into this game 
than, you know, like all the other games combined, essentially, uh, which which is unfortunate. You still have to respect his other games, but I mean, how he played in this game is much more telling, I think. Well, Brandon does say Kyle Trask is a beast. I love watching him play. So we went from Trevor Lawrence to be a bust to Kyle Trask is a beast. I like Kyle Trask too. I really do. And he's got all the size. He's 6'5". He's just big. And he's a pocket passer, which I like. I don't hold it against him like some NFL scouts will. Mm-hmm. But just watching that game and not even really being a professional scout in any way, just saying, like, why isn't he looking to the other side of the field? He has not turned his head. Yeah, he, he really, again, like, I, the, the more I, I've said it, I, honestly, I said it at jump, like, you know, it, he just had a bad game. It just wasn't, like, a good, from the start, it wasn't good for him. You know, the, the Tony interception was so fluky, but, I mean, those kind of things get your confidence down as a quarterback. You know what I mean? And then you start thinking, well, shit, how's this going to play out? Now, I'll tell you what, though. From the, the third quarter till the, I, even in the fourth quarter, I think the kid played lights out. That pass to Kyle Pitts uh, to make it the 46. I mean, there are maybe four quarterbacks in the entire fucking country right now that can make that throw. Um, so, I mean, that's still special. He still has the ability to do special things. Uh, I just, you know, I would, like I said, I had him in deeper in the 50 range when we started the season. I don't think he's that deep, but I don't know if now he's the 22nd overall prospect. I mean, obviously he's going to go very high, but this game's very telling. It really is. Yeah. Well, it'll all come down to, I'm sure he's got another bowl game and then he's going to have obviously the combine. He can show whatever he can do there. The combine, I think is going to be bad for him because he's not like a mobile guy. He ain't going to be athletic or nothing like that. You know, no, so, if but, he shows good arm strength and like deep yes. outs, like that'll help. Yeah. Which I think he's, I mean, he's got that on tape. His arm is no question on tape. So now it's truthfully, it's the interview process for him. He needs to wow front offices in the interview process. So, and now we'll get on to the college football playoff then, which is three of these teams and the undeserving Ohio State, in my opinion, which I don't know. This is such a weird, weird playoff to me because I'll tell you what. These are probably the four best teams in the nation. They really are. Yeah. But does anybody really want to see Alabama, Notre Dame? No, nobody wants to fuck. It. It's going to be an absolute shit show blowout. And Ohio State, personally, I don't think deserves to be in there. I felt that this whole season. That's not a shocker. They played six games. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a season. That's not even half a season. So it's like, I, I don't think they're very deserving. I think Texas A&M. Should have got the bid, personally. I do. You know, when uh, granted, I'm an SEC guy. I, I favor the SEC. But when you run the gauntlet like they did and lose to the number one team in the nation in like they did in Alabama, who nobody can really fault them for, I, I don't know. I just felt like they kind of deserved it. Well, Brandon did ask, do you guys have any doubt that despite this loss, Notre Dame should have been in the playoff? Because I think it's dumb to think that they shouldn't be there. Uh, again, I think they're probably the third or fourth best team in the nation, but they shouldn't be there. Right. I mean, he also says I would put AMN over at OSU as well. And I understand, I understand the arguments for both because I do think, like you said, Ohio State is one of the top four teams in the country. Yes. So if you're going to have the four best teams play each other, you've got to have them in there. But like you said, they just – when A&M goes 8-1 and one, and one of those wins was against Florida and exactly. their only loss was against Alabama – then it's like, yeah, I don't know, how do you put Ohio State in there? Who, by the way, missed a bunch of games because of COVID. Like, uh, they didn't play Michigan, right? Which, even though Michigan was crap, that's still a big rivalry that could have been right. lost. You know, they didn't play a lot of tough games. They looked terrible against Northwestern. Like, they barely beat Northwestern. And, like, Northwestern is not, like, a powerhouse football. Like, I mean, in all honesty, Alabama beats Northwestern by 50. Like, like no joke, the spread of an Alabama-Northwestern game would be 28 points like it really would like against Florida it was 17 so against so against the Northwestern it'd be 28 points without even like like honestly it may be more so like it's tough for me because Notre Dame doesn't deserve to be on the same field as Alabama they've proven they can't play big games they just can't they lose these games every year it's a joke it's not fun to watch but they're probably the third or fourth best team in the nation. They really are. Like it's it's tough to say, but they really are. And it, it's just kind of a fluky year. It's one of the years where I'd have loved to seen them put in Cincinnati just for shits and gigs, kind of thing. Well, and that's where I think it's kind of weird. Is it's like, all right, we're saying, well, you can't put Ohio State in there, even though they're the one of the best teams because they only played six games, and then say, well, you can't have Notre Dame in there because they're ten and one, but they're not one of the best teams. 
Yeah, I know. I agree. I mean, like I said, it's really just a tough spot. Like, I don't like the four teams that are in it, but I truthfully understand why the committee did it. I, I understand, like, kind of their thought process. Um, you know, it makes sense. It's just not something that I think is enjoyable for anybody. Uh, I mean, does anybody really think it's not going to be Alabama Clemson at this point? No, I understand it's sports. Anything can happen. But, I mean, like, let's be real here. I still like OSU's chances – Possibly, um, you know, Tyler Jewell says they need a six or eight team playoff. I'd be well, like, I think they'd have to go to eight. They could do six with a buy, but I don't think. I mean, buys I hate. So, Ty, I love you, bro. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think they should go eight because then this year, I, I mean, just a buddy of ours, John Vincent, put it up. Then Cincinnati gets in. You know, um, uh, uh, why can't oh uh, Texas A and M finally Jesus gets in. Oklahoma, you know. All, what the yeah, Oklahoma maybe um you know honestly they got Ohio State got robbed in that game anyway but um you know all these teams that probably honestly I'd love to see Florida I know I'll tell you I know they lost two games but I'm telling you right now Florida's one of the four best teams in there Florida beats Notre Dame 100% Florida beats Notre Dame you'll never convince me otherwise uh, Brandon says OSU shouldn't have even been in the Big 10 title game let alone the CFP agreed they they altered their league to fit their biggest ticket which I, again I understand and, and I don't want to take the, uh, the the political approach. I know, obviously, uh, you know, the whole, uh, well, all those votes after the third shouldn't count. You know, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, um, <laughs> you say that you know, they, they changed. I understand that, like, I think it was, it was a Pennsylvania, I think it was Pennsylvania that had changed their, uh, you know, constitution, their state constitution or whatever, to allow the votes that came in between the third and the fifth or whatever it was to be counted or something like that. Uh, because of COVID. And I understand that. And then there was this whole challenge, right? Like, well, they're not allowed to do that. Well, per their constitution, per our constitution, they can, because they're yeah. a state and they're allowed to do that. Um, so kind of thing, same thing here. The Big Ten said, you know, technically they didn't play enough games, but, you know, we kind of want to see them in there. Exactly. It's really just, we want to cater to our biggest market team. And it's our sh- only shot to get a Big Ten team in. And if the Big Ten gets in like they did, they get a ton of fucking money. God, they get a ton of money and a ton of props and cred. You know what I mean? And it's just sick. I mean, an 18 playoff would have been so nice. I think it would have been so nice. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, I don't even know if it'll be eventually, but this year I think it would have been super nice. Um, I mean, next thing we got is we touched on a Wentz trade. Um, uh, he wants out of there. I think especially now with the way Jalen Hurts played yesterday. I know they lost. But, I mean, man, the guy had four touchdowns, looked really good. It, again, it's just the way the team looks is just – it looks like a better football team with with Jalen Hurts. Now, again, I think this is like a Lamar Jackson syndrome where you give enough tape on this guy, they'll figure him out next year and things like that. But at this point, I mean, I don't – I saw your take, and, I, and I'm going to get – and I'm going to let you say it because I actually think I agree with it, so – I'm going to give you your due props here and let you give it as your take. Oh, which take was that? The one where you said you think they should keep Carson Wentz as the starter, uh, and and then you know Jalen Hurts is the backup, and you let Carson Wentz. You got to figure out essentially if you and then if Carson Wentz doesn't work, that's fine. Then you put in Jalen Hurts. But no, no, that wasn't my take. I thought it was. No, my take was that Carson Wentz needs to shut up. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, shut up, play. And I mean, he'll be named the starter next season. Like, I don't think you just up and name Jalen Hurts your starter after four games. I think they call it a competition in preseason. Yeah. See, I don't even know if I'd call it a competition. I'd back him. I'd say, hey, you're my starter. Let's do this. You got four games, though. Like, if we're not looking like a winning football team after four games, we're going to go with Jalen Hurts. You know what I mean? Um, Because, I mean, at this point, the Eagles have zero leverage. I mean, so does he because he's under contract. I understand. But, like, you're not – like we talked about, it's going to be really hard to move $34 million, And it's going to be really hard to get peak value because he's never played worse. Like, I mean, the guy just looks awful. Well, and like I said, it's not $34 million, It's $140 million that you're trying – because the team that takes him on – is going yeah, to have to take next. on the rest of the, yeah. the the next years too. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and it's the start of the deal. Like this is the start of the four year one forty extension. Like this this is the start of it. This next yeah, year. so it's like it's it's going to be a rough one for him. I I don't know. I mean, again, I think they're in a buff, tough spot because. But Doug Peterson is so tied to him, and Doug Peterson loves him. But I mean, Jalen Hurts is playing really good football, so that's going to be tough to not start this kid. 
I mean, it's going to be tough. Uh, next thing we'll do is basketball. And the Gobert Supermax, the biggest contract ever for a big man. Does he Stifle deserve power. it? Does he deserve it? That's a tough one. Um, I, mean, I say no. Yeah, I would say no, but I hate to use the term deserve too. I don't I like, know. I know. Um, but I, I think that obviously like the Stifle Tower is a cool nickname. That's how he's got I love it. it. It's because obviously he is a ridiculous defender. He protects the rim as good as anybody. He gets a ton of rebounds. But here's the crazy thing is when you look at his numbers, what does he do better than Clint Capella? Because Clint Capella has the same numbers, you know, and it's maybe Not a little bit more. That. I think he's Jared Allen. Like I, I think. Yeah, I mean, is Jared Allen going to get a $205 million contract? Yeah, exactly. you know, I mean, I had, if I'm the Jazz, I mean, obviously they put all of their chips into Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And I don't get it. I don't. Was Rudy Gobert really trying to leverage something? Like, hey, if I don't get a super max, I mean, I think if you gave him 150, he'd be happy. <laughs> that's what I. That's literally what I said. <laughs> I literally said to somebody, I'm like, so do you think they started at 150 and he was like, nah, fuck you? And they were like, okay, we'll give you 200. Or, or do you think they were just like, here's 200? And he's like, holy shit, they gave me 200 million dollars. Like, because I think that's what happened. I, whoever his agent is is a. God, everybody needs to sign. I'm assuming it's uh uh damn, why can't I, LeBron's agent? What's his name? His buddy? Oh yeah, uh, Rich Paul. Rich Paul. I'm assuming it's Rich Paul cuz he's just on a roll right now, but um I mean, it doesn't make sense to me for one unless you're Anthony Davis or Giannis Santacompo or you know Joel Embiid or something or I don't even know if I'd do it for Carl Anthony Towns. I don't I don't see the value in giving a big man that kind of money. Um, unless they're extremely versatile, they can score multiple ways, and they can help me defensively. Now, maybe Rudy Gobert develops an offensive game. No, who's to say he doesn't? You know, and 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 things like that. But right now, as just like a premier defensive stopper, which he is, he's he's outside of Anthony Davis. I mean, there's really nobody better defensively. I think as a big man, you know, I think it's them two, and you know, you're you're fighting for scraps after that. I mean, not scraps, but like you know. Yeah. But still, for 200 mil for a defensive guy. Well, you know who it reminds me of who also got a max deal? It wasn't as big as this because this was a little a few years ago before the salaries went sky high. But was a DeAndre Jordan, you know, defensive oh, yeah. guy, got that's a huge true. contract. That's, that's actually, that's who he is. He's DeAndre Jordan. I mean, he's a giant Ben Wallace. I, I, I don't like, I don't. Well, better offensive Ben Wallace. Yeah, true. But I mean, it's even still like his offensive game isn't really that developed. Like, it's not like he's like. Like, I don't see him post-moving people and things like that. It's really, he's just, is a lot of offensive rebounds and just, you know, like pick-and-roll situations, cutting to the basket and easy buckets, I think, because he's 7-1 and he's got a 14-10 wingspan. You know what I mean? Like, but, I mean, good for him. I mean, and, and I, honestly, you could do worse than Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert as your pairing for Utah. Like, you really could. I think it's a great pair to kind of build on, so. Well, I completely get the Donovan Mitchell. Like I said the Rudy Gobert one, just a little bit of a head scratcher. I think Donovan Mitchell's. If I was building a franchise, he'd be one of the top guys. I, 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 I took. I love his game. I love it. Yeah, top ten. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Now onto the fat man. Yeah, I don't have a graphic for him, but we all saw him uh, last week. Just show our own bellies, and that's <laughs> that's essentially what James Harden looks like. I'm in better shape than James Harden at this point. I think. Yeah, he looks, uh, yeah, he looks so bad. He's on the. He he made, he gained the COVID thirty for sure, um, and now he's request. I mean, he's one hundred percent says I want out of there. Um, the trade talks are are pretty wild now. I'm hearing all kinds of things. Uh, I'm hearing now. I've just heard rumors today that Toronto and Boston are the favorites now. And so you, well. and and you then- said like you mentioned Siakam's on the block, and you were first to break that. And then I mentioned I think Jalen Brown, and they're both the two guys that are essentially on the block. Um, which is wild. I mean, that's funny. People, they must be listening to our show. Wait. I think so. They're getting our ideas. Yeah. Uh, the, the one I'd seen earlier today was that uh, the Denver Nuggets were talking about moving uh, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. for James mm-hmm. Harden. Which would be awful. I, actually, I was looking at Michael Porter Jr., but I couldn't find a second piece. Yeah. Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. is way too much to get. Which is, and, well, I couldn't find it confirmed by anybody. This was just yeah. somebody that posted on Bleacher Report or something. No, no, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And then, but the the Celtics in Toronto seems legit. Like that seems from legit mm-hmm. sources. Yeah, uh, the Celtics is an interesting one for me because 
I don't know if Brad Stevens has had a diva superstar. I know somebody brought Kyrie Irving, you know, but and that didn't James, work. <laughs> yeah, but James Harden is way more of the player than Kyrie was. Yeah. And I'm curious if Danny Ainge would have Stevens back in a deal like this, particularly if he parts with Jalen Brown, a couple other pieces. If then James Harden's like, I don't want to do X, Y, or Z. If Danny's to be like, you know, Brad's the coach, kind of like Riley did with uh, Spolstra. Mm-hmm. Or if Danny would be like, no, 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 don't worry, we'll make it better for you. I mean, it's I, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. I, I agree. I don't see, but the only thing is, I don't know if James Harden's never really been like a a cancer, a locker room cancer or anything, has he? No, no, but just the, I think the whole this is coming out now. Like the, again, holding out, which I think he was holding out because he was trying his hardest to try to get back in shape before he showed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> um, then he uh, shows up fat, you know, and you're like, what the heck? And then he's saying, I still want out of here. It just, it, it's a complete spin on what we've known about James Harden. It is. It is, which is weird. I agree. So, but that's right. And honestly, I know you said the Kemba thing doesn't work. I think it does because I honestly think Kemba runs your second unit at that point, um, which, which honestly I think makes Boston stupid scary because I think James Harden and Jason Tatum on a, on a front line are literally a match made in heaven. I don't think you like, honestly, I mean, it doesn't really get any better. I mean, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, but they're not playing together. You know, it's like a backcourt. I know he's a small forward, but that's a backcourt in my opinion. They're not a forward anymore. Like the wing player, he's like the prototypical wing guy for him. And honestly, Jalen Brown and John Wall, like I mentioned, I think that's a perfect pairing for Houston too. And and I love Jalen Brown's game. I think he explodes over there in in Houston and becomes a, a legit twenty five point scorer. Honestly, he could for sure. And, and did you see Jason Tatum is six ten now? Yeah, he's growing. So it's like yeah. he, now he's a power forward. So it's like you know, I, I mean, they're just scary. That that team would be scary good. I think. Like I really do. I think they get better in that trade. If I'm being honest, like, and I love Jalen Brown. They get better in the right now. They may not be better in the future, obviously, but they definitely get better in the right now. They're the. I mean, they're probably already the front runner for the East. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. There's a couple, but like they get James Harden, that they're easily the front runner for the East, in my opinion. Well, and don't forget too, the next two hundred million dollar big man, Taco Fall. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> I, love, I love Taco Fall. I'm a big fan. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I just haven't seen like enough of him. I guess I don't know. I mean, I get like he's a crowd favorite and everything, but I don't. I I, I mean, other than being seven eight, like what's his game? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but that's tough to defend, bro. I mean, it's tough to defend. Uh, it, it reminds me of you know he's a less skilled version of Boban. Yeah. So when you watch Bo- Boban, will score twenty points in eleven minutes. Like he just yeah. he's unstoppable. Yeah. Um, but he can't play more than twelve minutes, or he has a heart attack. So. And also he fouls a lot in my opinion. So which you'd have to keep under wraps because those guys just can't move, you know what I mean? But still, it would definitely be interesting. I mean, Taco Fall is a great watch. And I mean I love the cult following he has in Boston. All right, so Top Ten it? Well, top ten we can skip this we can do music. I kinda wanna do movies because movies is kinda okay. All right. So it, I'll, I'll mention just the fact that the, the blog is up on uh, bellyupsports.com. Visit there. I did uh, a few days ago the top 10 holiday songs of all time, in my opinion. Feel free to argue. But I just did top 10 Christmas movies. Now, you can see there's several faces up there, and we'll get to those. But I thought it would be interesting to get Dan's take on some of these uh, these, these movies and in, in, in the way I ranked them. Now, let's see what I got a comment here first. Yeah, holiday show, John May. <laughs> hey what's good john hey my dog bro so let's let's get started the, the main thing i wanted to say about these movies right is, is just like i did with the songs i've got the absolutely no way they get included in the top 10 first right? and foremost let me start your criteria okay. sucks okay um and move on now we can go on okay <laughs> so the number one, no chance it's a Christmas movie, no chance it makes the top ten is Die Hard. Which is Sorry. wrong. No, Die it's Hard. It's a holiday it, movie. It is. It is not. In it is. For, in order for it, it to be a takes holiday place movie, at a Christmas party. Th- there's basketball in the movie Coming to America. It doesn't make it a basketball movie. There's mm. The movie itself does not revolve around the holiday. It's it's just – it's during the holiday. So in order for it to be a holiday movie, like the next one I have there is Gremlins, right? Gremlins, at least, Gizmo was a holiday present. Um, the whole thing takes place during Christmas. They have Christmas movies playing. There's Christmas music playing. It's, it, it takes place during Christmas. So at least Gremlins is. Gremlins is a Christmas movie, too. Christmas movie. It is. 
But yeah. it's also in no way because it's a horror, and I think Christmas movies can't be horrors. So the the one I, that I can't get behind is not having the Nightmare Before Christmas. That's that's a. I mean, it's a Christmas movie. You're never going to tell me it's not. It's it's not even a horror movie. It it has to do with like like wholesome thing. You're never going to convince me that's not a Christmas movie, and like it upsets me. It's not on your list. It's like identity it, confused. It 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 genuinely upsets me. It's not on your list. Well, it's like I said, it's identity confused because many consider it a Halloween movie because you know Jack is the king of Halloween. He tries to make Christmas like Halloween, so it's, it's it blends the two holidays together. And so we don't know: is it a Christmas movie or is it a holiday or is it a, 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 a Halloween movie? Since mm-hmm. it, since it doesn't know, neither do I, and so I can't make it. <laughs> Just because it has to do with other things doesn't mean it's not a, a Christmas movie. Now, the other one, too, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't see your list, so I'll let you go. What's your, what's your, is, 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 is Johnny Depp on this list or not? He is not. So Edward Scissorhands didn't make your list. It did not make the list. I hate you in every way. Well, because I didn't have eight Tim Burton movies in my top ten. I mean, not eight, but like two of the best ones that are clearly Christmas movies. I'm guessing you didn't have Bad Santa either, did you? Bad Santa was a not even close. (laughs) How? (laughs) Because while it's a Christmas movie, it is raunchy, and Christmas movies are wholesome. But they're not. It has a wholesome ending and, and has a good theme that really shows like, hey, look, it really is about being... Like with the family and things like that. But I don't care what the last eight minutes of the movie is about. What I care about <laughs> is the entirety of the movie about. It's about a guy gets drunk and like is a womanizer. It has nothing to do with Christmas spirit to me. So those are the not going to make it. All right. The uh, honorable mentions we had Home Alone, you know, uh, is one of my favorites. And I had uh, Muppets Christmas Carol. So you can actually do a top 10 just Christmas Carol movies because there's so many different variations. Yeah, because there's so many. Um, but I just did the Muppets as the honorable mention, and this is the one that really bugged my friend Kevin, who's a diehard Christmas guy. I had The Grinch That Stole Christmas as honorable mention and not in the top ten. How? Because I had so many good ones in the top ten, I didn't want to kick. There's there's no good. way that's not in the top ten. Honestly, all uh, the, the both The Grinch movies, um, The Grinch That Stole Christmas, the original cartoon one, and then the Jim Carrey one, both should be in your top ten. Well, Jim Carrey doesn't even get an honorable mention for me. But you're just a really terrible human being at this okay, point. Well, so you because, are a Grinch. You should have just done this whole thing in a Grinch costume, bro. I could have been swayed. I can still be swayed that the Grinch should make the top ten. I agree. Um, but that said, number ten, I have the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Yeah, it's good. Um, number nine, I have Mickey's Christmas Carol. So if you're gonna go with the Christmas Carol, that's my favorite of them. Okay. Um, number eight, although this is kind of a Christmas Carol, eight, I have Scrooged Bill Murray. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, number seven, I have the Charlie Brown Christmas. It's just a really nice story. It is. Uh, it catches a lot of heat because of when Linus quotes the Bible in it. Mm-hmm. But, you but know, chill out, people. Yeah, man. chill the fuck out, dude. Um, you do know this holiday was built around a fucking Bible character, right, guys? Well, anyway. that's a spoiler for everybody. It's actually a pagan holiday. That the I know, well, that stole, I know, but, but that yeah, exactly. They, they were stolen and made into a, a religious holiday. I understand. I know that. Um, number six, Polar Express. Um, so good. Yeah, number five, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, uh, so good. The, the old one, right? Old one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, number four, Christmas Vacation, Chevy Chase. Ooh, good one. I actually forgot about that. That's a good one. Uh, number three, I have It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, now, it's an older movie, and I didn't have Miracle on 34th Street on here, which is always in the top. You know, whatever. It's usually one or something. It's usually, like that, yeah. yeah, but it's just so old and it's boring. At least mm-hmm. It's a Wonderful Life was nominated for five Academy Awards. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. Ever. Yeah, it's a good movie. Um, so it gets number three. Number two, A Christmas Story, which I know yep. is your favorite. Yep. And number one, I have Elf with um, Will Ferrell is my favorite uh, of all time. And both those movies are going to come up on Saturday after Christmas. We're going to you know, quiz each other on those movies. Yes, we are. Those ones are going to be the the Christmas special, um, and it's going to be a good one. I mean, I don't disagree with a lot. I'm not a big fan of Elf, but I'd probably have it on my – I don't know. I may not because I'd have both Grinches and then um, – Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. What are you kicking out for Edward Scissorhands? Um, probably the Mickey's Carol. Ugh. Oh, I um, yeah. I love Edward Scissorhands. That's such a good movie. 
And then Bad Santa is probably in my list, too. Oh, your list is just shit. (laughs) (laughs) My list is one you could actually watch. Your list fucking sucks. Other than It's a Wonderful Life, which I will admit is a bore, but it had to be in there. The rest of the (laughs) list is far entertaining. It's it's crazy. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, well, now I don't feel bad about spoiling Mandalorian for you at the end of this thing. I mean, I I read read the spoilers. Um... Damn, right, we're gonna talk about Mandalorian, in and there's a second. gonna be spoilers. There's gonna be spoilers, so uh, yeah. when we get to that, you know, you're gonna want to click us off or something. We got to do it fast. So I'm at twenty percent, and my charger is not working. All right, so let's go with the Mandalorian then, I guess. Uh, yeah, um, obviously season finale. Season finale. Uh, the season's been incredible. I'm um, John Favreau. You're a god. Thank you so much for everything you've done to save this franchise. Um, I hope you do the movies in the upcoming future. Um, but it's just been incredible. Um, recap, Mando lost the kid to Moff Gideon. Um, then I haven't actually seen the final episode. However, the big massive spoiler. Big massive spoiler coming up. Uh, well, let's, I'm going to lead into the spoiler. For oh, okay. All right. Because basically they get cornered. They're trapped in the cockpit. It's yeah. uh, the, the two Mandalorian ladies, Mando, the kid, and Moff Gideon because they've captured Moff Gideon. Um, uh Mando is trying to give the black saber to the girl. And she's like, I can't take it from you. I have to defeat you in order to get it. And he's like, no, I'm just giving it to you. She's no, it doesn't work that way. And they have this whole little bickering back and forth. Next thing you know, these dark stormtroopers are, they're unbeatable. They're made of like crazy metal. Yeah. And they're like breaking down the door. It looks like these guys are toast. Cause Mando took like five minutes to kill one of them. And now there's like 20 of them like pounding down the door. And also you see this X-wing fighter flying in the street. And they're like, Oh, an X-wing. Great. One X-wing we're saved. Right? <laughs> and uh, then, uh, you know, they're looking at the screen and like, all right, X-Wing fighter, identify yourself. And, and you don't hear anything. Now, as soon as you don't hear anything, I start thinking, OK, something big's coming. Yeah. Because if it was like, I thought it was going to be the two guys, the two X-Wing guys. From the beginning. Out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, all right, that's going to be that. But then they didn't answer. So I'm like, oh, OK, something bigger is coming. And then we see a cloaked figure walking down the hallway. And now I'm starting my heart starting to, to beat. All right, and I think it could be uh, Oshaka, whatever her name is. Yeah, um, you know, because we just saw her earlier. She's a Jedi. She wears the cloak. But she's yeah. a dark Jedi, whatever it is. And then we get our Rogue One moment, where <sighs> this happens. You're gonna see. This, again, we have a little bit of a some video here, and you can see the green saber. And this is, this is gonna get cut off, and we're our channel is gonna get banned. But that's okay. No, it, it won't because there's no sound. Oh, okay. Plus, I've given Star Wars credit down the ruler right here. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you see the green lightsaber. We see the black glove. We see the bare hand. We see him using the force push. We see him crushing another one. And now I'm going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Right. And then the doors open. Uh, he's killed all of the, the stormtrooper guys. And Mando says, open the doors. And they're like, are you crazy? He's like, just do it. And we get this smoky, still the green saber there. And you're 99% sure, but you're like, please let it be true. Please let it be true. Please let it be true. And then we get the reveal. Yeah! <laughs> that, Young Mark Hamill, baby. <laughs> that Luke Skywalker has shown up to save them. And Mando does that. He's like, are you a Jedi? And they say, he's like, yes, I am. And he's like, come on, little one. You can come with me. And then, of course, the really touching moment where uh, the little baby Yoda like reaches up. He touches Mando's helmet. And Mando takes his helmet off in front of everybody to show Yoda his face. Or yeah. Rogu his face. R- Grogu, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, when I saw the hooded character, like I, said, I just started, like, I can't believe this is happening. Getting the goosebumps everywhere. I know. I, when I saw the green saber, I was like, oh. I read it, and I saw it, and I said, and I said, you know, because everybody was saying, like, holy fuck shit everybody was talking about it and then they said no grogu doesn't die no mando doesn't die they say but luke skywalker and r2d2 show up to save the day and i mean at that moment i was like what the fuck because what i don't like about that then is the timeline feels off to me no they made it clear right from the jump that this takes place right after return of the jedi oh do they this is yeah. right after the right after. okay the fall of the empire Oh, okay. That's right. They do say the empire has just fallen. That's right. Okay. So then, yeah. So then I'm okay with this. Um, man, that would have been really cool, honestly, if Rogue One and the it wasn't Rogue One, Return of the Jedi, that one would have somehow teased in Grogu. 
Well, they didn't know back in 1984 that they were going to... That wasn't... No, not Return of the Jedi then. Uh, the last one they just did in 2020. The Last Jedi. Oh, The Last Jedi. Oh, and that was my question. It's like, okay, if so they Luke- had, like, tied in an old Grogu yeah. and, like, and had, the, and had him help um, Ren, that yeah. would have been... That would have been super next level. But the thing is, too, is that we didn't even know that, you know... I, I don't know, like... How old would Grogu be? Be like, because he's fifty here, so he's fifty years old here. Because I mentioned that in the first episode when he catches. Yeah. So this and, and this takes place. Those movies take place another thirty-five years. So it's only eighty-five. He's still a baby. You know. 85. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Yoda was yeah, like nine hundred in the movies. Yeah. So I guess you're right. Damn. But still, then maybe teasing a baby Grogu or something that would have been cool as shit. Because. Maybe like when they go to see the last, like when he she goes to see Mark Hamill, uh, Luke Skywalker on the island or whatever, he's there like training with Grogu or something that like that would have been sick. Like you know what I mean? Like that would have been really sick. Well, I hope um, that Grogu wasn't killed by the Knights of Ren in this whole battle. In, yeah, in this whole battle and shit. Yeah, um, that, that, but that's yeah. one of my favorite lines actually from uh, Return of the Jedi. Right, is when Luke says to Yoda, "Is it Master Yoda? You look tired." It's like we're nine hundred years old. You are look as good. You will not. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dog! But yeah, I mean, I truthfully, I haven't even seen it yet. You know what I mean? I've been slacking. It was a really busy week. Um, but man, I'm excited, and that spoiler just makes it so incredible for me. I cannot wait, dude. I cannot it, wait. It really is. The, and like I said, it's the Rogue One moment because honestly, I thought Rogue One was not that great of a movie. But the last Ooh, five Rogue One's Vader, one of my favorite movies ever out of the series. I feel like when Vader shows up at the end and starts yeah. kicking, that's like that makes the whole movie. Yeah. And so that's what this was, is like Luke just destroying these you know, soldiers. Yeah. Well, I think that's it, guys. Yeah. Actually, I, mean, I, I don't have a Kenny picture, so um I'll just, I'll just play the Kenny sound if you we'll want. We'll just throw it. Here, let me here, let me wind this. <sighs> Ha, 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 ha.